This is the first of several short chemistry reviews of material you must know in order to pass the CSUMB introductory biology series. I'm sure this material is review for you, but you should take the time now to get to know these 10 elements really well again. Hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, phosphorus, sulfur, sodium, magnesium, calcium, and chlorine. The types of properties to investigate during your review would be things like electronegativity of each one of these elements and the number of electrons in the outer shell. It's a good idea to know these ions as well. Um, nitrate has a single negative charge and it has uh, three oxygens. Phosphate has four oxygens and it is minus three. Uh, ammonium is positive with four hydrogens. Uh, hydrogen ion is positive we often call it just a proton. Sodium ion is positive. Potassium ion is positive. Chloride ion is negative. And magnesium and calcium both have two plus charges. As you progress in your studies of chemistry, you'll no doubt run into all kinds of strange and exotic bonding that happens under special conditions, etc. But in biology, we're happy to report that for almost all your purposes, hydrogen is going to make a single bond, one covalent bond. Oxygen is going to make two. Nitrogen is going to make three. Carbon will always make four covalent bonds and phosphorus makes five and you can refer to your chemistry text for the details of why that is. Of course they also make double and triple bonds uh, for example in carbon dioxide up here we've got two double bonds let's count the number of bonds the oxygen makes. Well it makes two bonds and the number of bonds this oxygen makes is also two bonds and how many bonds has the carbon made? Well it's made four. So they're, they're still following the basic biological chemistry rules. As we've just seen hydrogen always forms just one covalent bond. Carbon always forms four covalent bonds and in biology we get sick of writing all those carbons and hydrogens for all the biological molecules we're going to cover this semester. So we use a type of shorthand and that would this molecule here is ethane and we would actually represent that like this. Okay, so this is a single bond between two carbons. So there's a carbon here and a carbon here. And since carbon always makes four bonds and we've put no other atoms in here, we don't, aren't representing any other atoms, we know that there are three hydrogens at this end and three hydrogens at this end so that the carbon can make one, two, three, four bonds, and again, one, two, three, four bonds, and each hydrogen is only making a single bond. Okay, let's get a little more advanced with this uh, biochemistry shorthand. How would you represent an ethanol? Well, here we've got a carbon and a carbon and then an oxygen. So we're going to put this OH here like that. And it's usually sufficient just to write the hydroxyl group there. So we've got one carbon at this end and a carbon here bonded to an oxygen. 
we know that it actually looks like this. This is the molecule we're representing with this simple shorthand. And you can see how much faster I can write on the board when I use this type of notation, which all of you will understand means this. Uh, down below, we're going to look for a little error here. Can you spot the mistake? There should be a double bond here. Oxygen always makes two bonds, so we can easily, I expect you on exams to be able to go through and identify mistakes. That means you're sort of understanding how many bonds each of these makes. And if we're going to represent this molecule, which happens to be glycine, we will draw an N, and then the two carbons, and they're double bonded to this oxygen, and this is to another oxygen, and a hydrogen like this, and we'll put our two H's here for the amino group, but in fact, in real shorthand, what we what you more often see is just that we'll put functional groups that biologists all know or recognize, and you guys are biologists, so we're going to write H2N to represent the amino group, and we'll write CO. O H to represent the carboxyl group. Again, this shorthand represents this molecule over here, and you should be able to go through and identify where are the carbons. Okay, there's a carbon that's drawn out, and there's the other carbon. What's bonded to that other carbon? Well, two hydrogens, you should know that if, I, if an atom, other atoms have not been represented, those are going to be hydrogens. So we don't have to draw them and clutter up these molecules with H's everywhere. I want you to practice making a bunch of shorthand representations of amino acids and sugars. And for the in-class quiz, you will have to convert several of these shorthand molecules back into the full structural formulas like these on the left.